let us all that we can to build a better future. Kamala is a sinking ship, similar to the Titanic or Lusitania. Hell, Casa Concordia, too, even though it landed on its side. It's interesting to look at somebody's political career and realize that they've been put in a position that they're not qualified for. I'm going to say that again. Kamala Harris is not qualified for the position of power that she has. She has constantly embarrassed herself and has been hemorrhaging staff members. And Harris is now in the hot seat. Now they're trying to roll her out. Toward the end of last year, senior aides of Vice President Kamala Harris gathered in the Vice President's ceremonial office and sat around a table to chart out the year ahead. <clears throat> the group presented her with a strategy document. It recommended that Harris get on the road as much as possible and and and, and persisted uh, that Americans weren't seeing and hearing from their leaders enough that they'd be wise to fix that. The plan also called for Harris to lean into issues they felt suited her skill set. The fight to try and shore up abortion rights across the country stood atop the list, which I find hilarious because this administration could have done something to protect Roe v. Wade, even though you know they, they chose not to engage in it at all. Harris's team had put a strategy and media plans together for her before, but this one came at a particularly important time. The entire office believed the previous six months had been Harris's best stretch as vice president. Hey, folks, let's have democracy in the chat. Do you think Harris has ever had a successful month as being vice president? Type one for, oh, yeah, Kit. God, trust Kamala. A type two, no, no. She's never been successful. A clear break from a shifting portfolio items and bad headlines that marked her first two years. Collectively, the group also understood that Harris was about to enter a critical juncture, one where her issues were top of mind for voters and her role on the Democratic ticket was coming into sharper focus and heightened scrutiny. Harris had asked them to put pen and pen to paper to formulate ways she could capitalize on momentum and meet the coming moment. Half a year later, the plan is being put into practice. As the Biden campaign begins to rev up, the microscope on Harris is intensifying. Republicans have made clear she will be used as a credential to go after the president, making the case that his age effectively makes her the head of the ticket. How she performs over the next few months will determine whether those attacks stick. It also will go a long way in sealing confidence within Biden Biden world about having her in a more public role. Continuing on, again, something we talked about on yesterday's show, half of Americans view Kamala Harris unfavorably polls show. Vice President Kamala Harris' unpopularity gap is wider in, than any second-in-command in the last 30 years. A new poll has found a staggering 49% of registered voters have a negative view of the Veep, the vice president, with 39% saying their view is very negative, according to an NBC News poll released Sunday. By contrast, just 32% of Americans say they view Harris positively, and only 11% say they have a very positive view. The 58-year-old 17 uh, favorability spread is the lowest for a vice president in history of the NBC News poll. Kamala is not popular. All these people who were vice president before Kamala are leaps ahead of her. But I think it's important for us to be reminded just exactly why Kamala is unfit for this job. We have to be reminded why she never had what it took to be vice president or even be president because during the 2020 campaign, her political career was almost destroyed by Tulsi Gabbard. And were it not for the Democratic establishment trying to control the narrative, I don't think we'd ever hear from Kamala Harris ever again. Case in point, this lovely video. I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. And uh, for those who, of you who don't know, if you look up Kamala Harris's record, especially when she was in California, her record towards prisoners is downright the most abusive that you would see from a Democratic lawmaker. 
you know, only recently could uh, prisoners who were uh, volunteer firefighters only now, only now can they apply to get jobs to become firemen. When Kamala was in charge. Yeah, she didn't allow that to happen. Just want to share that with all you lovely people. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. As the elected attorney general of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And but she also withheld evidence that could have freed a man who was on death row. Now, it's not called life row. It's called death row, which means there's only one way that that row is going to end. No pun intended. But yes, that's something she did. And she was notorious especially in no matter what office she got. She constantly favored the, the establishment and those in power. Kamala Harris is by far one of the most corrupt and, well, lackluster, mediocre politicians in recent memory. Now, all these politicians are the same, but Kamala, at this point in time, especially during this primary debate, this is how you know that her campaign was always going to end up as epic failure because she wasn't ready for that one-two punch. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about re-entering former offenders and getting them counseling. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the and not to mention, Kamala is saying that you know she had a very good record. Withholding evidence to free innocent people doesn't make you a good person, Kamala. And it's been proven that your office did that. Why would you do that? And why would you be proud of your work, especially withholding evidence that could free an innocent person from jail? I mean, I think we all can agree here, too, as well. The last thing any one of any one of us want to see is somebody innocent in jail serving for a crime that they did not commit. And how crazy is it that liberals toast their drinks to Biden and Kamala? without even acknowledging the fact that both Biden and Kamala have contributed to the increase and destruction of so many communities because of their diehard support for the prison industrial complex. People who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. <laughs> Our Democratic Party, unfortunately, is not the party that is of, by, and for the people. It's a, it is a party that has been and continues to be influenced by the foreign policy establishment in Washington, represented by Hillary Clinton and others' foreign policy, by the military-industrial complex and other greedy corporate interests. Senator Harris. And just so I want to point out that this is the second debate, the final gut check that destroyed Kamala's 2020 uh, primary campaign. Any response? Oh, sure. <laughs> 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 um, I, I think that um, it, it's unfortunate that we have someone on the stage who is attempting to be the Democratic nominee for president of the United States, who during the Obama administration spent four years full time on Fox News criticizing President Obama. Oh, that's who has spent full time. That's who has spent full time. <laughs> criticizing people on this stage as affiliated with the Democratic Party. When Donald Trump was elected, not even sworn in, buddied up to Steve Bannon to get a meeting with Donald Trump in the Trump Tower, fails to call a war criminal by what he is as a war criminal. But I wonder, Kamala, you know, when you have made lies and made it 
false statements, for example, are you going to hold yourself accountable? See, it takes a lot of courage to go on that stage. And I will say it took a lot of courage for Kamala to go back on that stage, especially the first time she got smacked around by Tulsi. But the second time to come back on there and try and promote yourself or build this image up of you being this caring person that wants to help American citizens out. Since then, the administration that you're a part of, Americans are struggling day in, day out just to make ends meet. And how interesting it is that at one point in time, on that debate stage, way back in 2020, when confronting your friend Joe, you made a statement to him that you were that little black girl that was facing off against busing and desegregation and, and that you were appalled that Biden was on the wrong side of history until you said it was only a debate. See what I mean about these politicians? They're nothing but professional liars. And then spends full time during the course of this campaign, again, criticizing the Democratic Party. What we need on the stage on, in November is someone who has the ability to win. And by that, we need someone on that stage who has the ability to go toe to toe with Donald Trump and someone who has the ability to rebuild the Obama coalition and bring the party and the nation together. I believe I am that candidate. And uh, since then, Roe v. Wade overturned. The kids are still in cages. The prison industrial complex is humming along. The military industrial complex is humming along. Oh, but the trains are derailing. Communities are still being polluted by heavy industry. Oh, we got student debt. We don't have Medicare for all. But hey, you're heading on the campaign trail to fix your image, even though you have the lowest approval rating in U.S. history, you are the least liked vice president. Voters, not just in the Democratic Party, but voters as a whole, don't like you. And again, this video should once again remind people just how incompetent Kamala truly is. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Congress, yes. Congresswoman Gabbard, I'll give you a chance well, to respond. What Senator Harris is doing is unfortunately continuing to traffic in lies and smears and innuendos because she cannot challenge the substance of the argument that I'm making, the leadership and the change that I'm seeking to bring in our foreign policy, which only makes me guess that she will, as president, continue the status quo, continue the Bush, Clinton, Trump foreign policy of regime change wars, which is, is deeply destructive. And again, it's, it's very true about everything that Tulsi Gabbard is saying about Kamala Harris. And since then, all the video evidence is out there. All the statements and all the articles showing that Kamala was never fit for the job. And case in point, again, Biden is going to be the oldest sitting president should he get reelected. And he's clearly showing signs of dementia. And unfortunately, when you get videos like this, and again, it's this is this is difficult to watch because the reality is a vote for Biden is a vote for Kamala. What does that say about us as a country that we are stuck with two politicians that are universally despised by voters? Case in point, this. It's hard to tell, but he's, he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. And he is... Uh... He's talking about Putin. Putin's losing the war in Iraq. I had, I had, I had no idea. And in, ca in case you didn't hear it, let's play it again. It's hard to tell, but he's, he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home, and he has uh, become a bit of a fly around the world. Uh, and it's not just NATO. It's not just the European Union. It's Japan. It's, it's uh, you know, it's forty nations. He's losing the war in Iraq. Again, he's not a spring chicken. The fact that the Democrats are going behind Biden should concern you. But the fact that waiting in wings is Kamala Harris should be raising red flags. She's not fit for the job. And already, probably the reason why, especially in that first article that I read, the reason why the her campaign or staffers are surrounding around her to get her on the road they're trying to rebuild that image of Kamala, but it's not going to work. 
it won't work because voters don't want Kamala. And even going further, here's another video, again, of Biden being completely out of his element. It's hard to tell, but he's, he's clearly losing the war in Iraq. He's losing the war at home. And he has uh, become a bit of a fly around the world. Uh, and it's not just NATO. It's not just the European Union. It's Japan. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's 40 nations. That was just another uh, video of the same uh, footage I played earlier. This is where we're at as a nation. The bottom of the barrel. And Kamala Harris is, yes, she is part of that. She is part of this weak system. Folks, 2024 should be a great awakening moment for voters in this country. Because if we continue to contribute to playing along with what the DNC and RNC are going to be giving us, all what we're doing is tightening the handcuffs that are already around our wrists. We cannot have that anymore. We have to be better, and we have to be ready to really step up and demand more. Because for too long, we have been given politicians like Kamala Harris to dictate rules over us all the while, all the while, these same politicians enrich themselves. We have to break away from the system, and we have to stand up for ourselves.